When I just sang another song Take me back to where we started I opened up my heart to you Should have the thumbs, should have the hearts Oh somebody God, I'm caught up in your hands Invite your family, invite your friends invite your enemies. Tag everyone you know. This word here, they need to hear this word. Tag everyone. Come on in. Come on in. to the meat of this message. I need every one of y'all to please do me one huge favor. I need every one of y'all to please share this right now. And after you have shared, just simply type in the comment section that I've shared it. I promise you, y'all, this word here, God's about to visit us tonight, y'all. Come on, I'm gonna give you a minute and 15 seconds, y'all. Come on, tag your people. Put them in those big, big groups that you do have. Come on, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Yes, God, yeah, God, yeah, God. Yes, we have.
started again. I'm a preacher till that you all are here. I don't take it for granted when people take out time and their busy schedule just to hear what Pastor T has to say. And for that, I say thank you. And for that, I'm a preacher to you all. Let me just put this disclaimer here before I go any further. If you haven't visited Faith War Family Worship Center in the last few months, you're literally doing yourself a disservice. We have literally experienced an open heaven in our ministry. We're literally seeing God do supernatural things. I mean, especially these last 30 days, we've been fasting, we've been praying. And uh, in, a, in one month's time, in one month's time, God has allowed us to snatch almost 60 souls in a matter of one month. One month, 60 souls have given their life to Christ. I'm telling you all, the harvest is ripe. But the laborers are few. Again, I told God, whether you send me, God, I'm going. And we're literally seeing a massive overflow take place in our ministry. And that's because we're sensitive to God. That's because we want more of God. We don't want to just do church. We want to do kingdom. And as a byproduct of that, God has been adding weekly and daily. So again, I say to you all, if you're in the Chicagoland area, get to 2 Washington Boulevard this coming Sunday. The doors will open up at 1.30. I strongly suggest getting there at 1.30 to get a good seat. And not only that, but just make sure that your spirit man is already ready for what's getting ready to take place. Uh, 2 Washington Boulevard at 2 o'clock, doors open up at 1.30. And at the end of this month, uh, at the end of this month, uh, we're doing a illustrated sermon, which is called Snatch Part 2. All right. One more announcement. This is the biggest announcement of the night. Uh, God, if God delay is coming, I'll be 50 years of age this coming year, uh, July 21st to be exact. And I want you all to come help celebrate me. Uh, my birthday again, millions didn't make it. I remember when I was 16, someone prophesied and told me that I would not live to be uh, 16 years of age, but they forgot to check with God. So God allowed me, if, this, if he delay is coming, to see 50 July 21st I want you to help come celebrate with me On July 23rd I have a world renowned speaker Bishop George Olson Dawson He will be my speaker this that On that Sunday If you haven't experienced his ministry Man I don't know what you You must have been living under a rock So again it's going to be July 23rd Bishop George Olson Dawson Will be my speaker um, Again if you haven't heard of Bishop Dawson You've been living under a rock so he's going to be my speaker. And uh, again, but in the meantime, that's a couple of weeks. Get there Sunday, amen? Let me go ahead and release this thing. I want to start off with this prophetic utterance because I got a word, y'all. I have a word. It's going to bless you. It's going to bless you. If you're one of the eight that I'm talking to, just type in Pastor T. I'm one of the eight. Come on. If you're one of the eight, just type in Pastor T. I'm one of the eight. Come on, y'all. If you're one of the eight, just type in I'm one of the eight. Thank you, Tasha. If you're one of the eight, just type in a one of the eight. Okay. Says the Spirit of the living God, in this month of July, there's getting ready to be a greater outpouring for those that are hungry for more of God. Says God, what's about to take place in this month of July is about to, is about to open up an 18-month drought. Mm. Says the Spirit of the living God, the deeper you go in me for the month of July, the deeper I'm going to unlock hidden treasures. For some says, the deeper you go, the more miracles you're going to experience and even see, says God. Says God, one of the reasons why many of y'all haven't seen your prayers answered because you refuse to go deeper. And that's why you can't see the U-turns of the Lord. That's why your circumstances won't change because you won't change. Says the Spirit of the living God, no growth, no release, no growth, no release, says the Spirit of the living God for the month of July. I am releasing strategies, revelation, ambitions, blueprints that will jumpstart your 2024. When others experience their personal droughts and because of what you do in, the, in this month, you will not experience it. Did I not say in my word according to Job chapter number 36? Verse number 11, he said, if they obey and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. 
Let me quote that scripture again. According to Job chapter number 36, verse number 11, it says, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. But the key is obey and serve him. If I can get eight people just to type in, I will obey and serve him. Come on, eight, eight people just type in, I will obey and serve him. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. This is a word here. I promise you, you don't want to log off prematurely because I'm going to prophesy to individuals, leave three people individually. Come on, just type in, I will obey and serve him. Says the Spirit of the living God, many of y'all will remain in this overstate season because you refuse to obey. According to 2 Chronicles chapter number 20, verse number 20, and they rose early in the morning and they went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall you prosper said the spirit of the living god as you go deeper in the month of july you're going to experience the provision the protection and the prophemia of god mm. the prophemia of god is what you're going to experience what is the prophemia of god the p-r-o p-h-e M I the prophemy of God the prophemia of god is when god speaks to you before the situation happens what is the prophecy of God? It is when God speaks to you before the situation happens. So in other words, since God spoke your healing, possess it. Since God spoke your deliverance, possess it. Since God spoke your prosperity, possess it. Since God spoke your peace, possess it. Since God spoke your joy, possess it. So in other words, you shall not be caught off guard when you're about to, when you're in the presence of God, I hear the spirit of the living God said, Terrence, no more. I need about seven people just to type in, no more. Come on, seven people just type in, no more. Oh God, I buy. come on, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, God, I feel your presence real strong. Come on, just type in, no more. What is the no more that God is speaking about? He said, there should be starting in this month of, of, of July. He said, there'll be no more debts, no more sicknesses, no more pill taking, no more bad decision making, no more mixture, no more in betwixt, no more. Said the Spirit of the living God, this is the season where no more shall expire. Oh God, he said, this is the season in which no more shall expire. He said, Terrence, I place my prophetic credentials down on the inside of you and upon your life. And you shall no longer have to prove to people that I'm speaking through you. God told this to me. He said, you will no longer have to prove that when you speak, that you're speaking on my behalf. He said, the proof is in the pudding, says God. I heard the Spirit of the living God say, prophetic mantles are dropping even on this line. Many of y'all will receive prophetic downloads. You will receive prophetic empowerment. I hear the Spirit of the living God saying, I am even upgrading your anointing even tonight. I hear God saying that tonight is called transitioning. Hey, people, just type that one word, transitioning. Oh, God. Oh, God. Says the Spirit of the living God, many of y'all, you've been going through transition after transition. Stand still after stand still. Delays after delays waiting then waiting even some more but i felt strongly that you are at the brink and the verge of something of the biggest manifested breakthroughs you've ever experienced in your life many of y'all you've been in a place where you have been you where you have had repeated confirmation where the lord is repeating what he has said and promised you over and over again this constant repetition is an indicator of how close the manifestation of that specific promise is and what he has been saying to you it is already in motion to manifest at its set appointed time says god all of heaven says god is invading your situation it's invading your circumstances to thrust to push and to bulldoze everything that is opposing what the lord has spoken over the time in your life it will be such an extraordinary thing what the lord is about about to do that you won't have time 
to recollect the pain and what it took for you to get to this moment. Says God, I am bringing you out of the wilderness and the refiner's fire, the processing of purging. As a result, you are coming out as pure gold, says God, carrying his heart and his fire in greater ways. Said the Spirit of the living God, as I'm bringing you out and restoring your statue, your confidence, and putting the fragmented pieces of your mantle back together, says God, you will be able to operate and function in your mantle at full capacity again and with greater strength and purity. You will walk in a greater authority and anointing than you ever have before and you will now carry a double portion of that anointing on your life, says God, in past seasons, especially now. There have been so many battles full of resistance and onslaught, though Though this, many people have been emotionally crippled by your pain. You've been crippled by your hurt. You've been crippled by your trauma. This has not only been a season of many battles, but one of transition and radical change. Change that has been for the good, although it has been painful. I hear God saying, even uh, Romans chapter number 8, he says all things work together for the good. That means that even your bad is working for your good. Said the Spirit of living God. Many of y'all, even in this season, have been receiving deep refreshment, rejuvenation, and healing from the pain and trauma of so many long overstayed battles. Though in this season, many individuals you have felt with, you have dealt with circumstances, situations, and people that have brought much pain and trauma to your life. It is also a time where we will see much healing, restoration of peace, and deep rest, says God. You have true, you have truly crossed over into a new era where many people will see fulfillment of many promises on your life, says God. These, cir these circumstances and situations that you've experienced have caused hope deferred. Woo! It have caused hope deferred, discouragement, disappointment, sorrow, and even grief. It is time to move forward, says God, from your past, from your pain. Heal from your pain, heal from the trauma, heal from those triggers, and move into this new thing that the Lord is doing. He said, if you don't, you will stay stuck in the trauma, rehearsing every pain, becoming bitter, becoming angry, or even resentful of the person or the situation, unable to move forward into all the things that God is releasing to you in this now season. Forgiveness, says God, and repentance is a must. Woo. He said repentance and forgiveness is a must. It must happen so that you can get your emotions back in order. Your mind healed and your heart completely restored, says God. God is recalibrating hearts to feel again. Not pain, but joy. God wants us to feel joy in this new era and and for the new things that the Lord is bringing into the into the people's life. And I hear the Spirit of Living God say, "The quicker you release them, the quicker you forgive, the quicker I can re the quicker I can release your miracle, the quicker I can release your blessing." But as long as you operate in a place called memory recall, as long as you remain in a place called flashback, as long as you remain in a place called instant replay the blessings of the lord the the, the the unravelings of the lord cannot take place but i heard god say the month of july will be a month that you will start seeing the dealings of the lord the month of july you will start seeing the revealings of the lord the month of july you will start seeing prayers answered in this month if you receive this just type in i receive this pastor t and that's the word of the lord Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. If you receive it, that's type it. I receive it. Hallelujah. 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 I dare you right now to start tagging people right now. You may have did it once, but keep tagging your people. Somebody that's connected to you need to hear this word. Come on. Don't be selfish. Let's share this gospel. Hallelujah. 
Let me go ahead and start teaching because I got a lot of ground I need to cover you all. So as I'm putting this together, as I'm putting this together, Sidney Lou, I literally heard God say this. He says, answers to unanswered prayers are going to be released. He said it just won't be answers from what you've been praying for, but, but God is going to release apostolic blueprints on how to achieve and accomplish every mission that he's placed down on the inside of you. God says in this hour, in this season, I'm releasing prophetic codes. Prophetic codes that will be released to those who are hungry and the more hungry you are, the more release you shall see. I literally heard God say, answers will be released. I need about seven people just to type in, release them God. Come on, seven people just type in, release them God. Come on y'all, let me take my time y'all. I'm getting ready to go somewhere y'all. Oh, I got a word y'all. I got a word, something that God gave me. God spoke to me, he says, he says, Terrence, prophetic holes will be released in this hour. Then he took me to Deuteronomy chapter number 29, verse number 29. I need someone to please just put that in a, to be my personal moderator and put in Deuteronomy chapter number 29, verse number 29. Whatever you do, all of you all that are watching me right now, do not log off prematurely. I believe God set you up tonight to hear this word. Whatever you do, do not log off prematurely. As you're putting Deuteronomy 29, verse number 29 there, please put the entire scripture in there. I want to release this. Look at what it says in Deuteronomy chapter number 29, verse number 29. It said, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all Somebody just type that one word all That we may do all The words of this law So in other words When God begins to reveal his secrets to us It's because We place a demand On God That's going to open up Treasures Not just for you You got to understand this Not only is God going to open up the treasures for you But he says I'm going to open up these treasures For your children's children See, prayer, and see, many of us, we got this thing confused about prayer. See, prayer isn't about praying for things. It's about opening up hidden treasures of God. Let me say that again. Prayer isn't just about praying for things, praying for healing, praying for a breakthrough, praying for deliverance. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not the sum total of prayer. Prayer in its totality it's about opening up the hidden treasures of and from God. I'm finding out, this is what I'm finding out, especially during these last 30 days. I'm finding out that the more that I pray, the more futuristic things of God are being revealed. Praying for things. Let me tell you, for those of you all, that when you ever come into the presence of God, you're always praying for a house. You're praying for a miracle. Let me tell you what level you are on when you're just literally just praying for things. When you're praying for things, when your prayers are just centered around you, around things that's going to bless you, that is literally the infantry level in our walk with God. And that's why David said it best. David said, deep calleth unto the deep. So in other words, the deeper you go in God, the more you unlock the hidden treasures. <laughs> Can I say that again? The deeper you go in God, the deeper and the more you unlock the hidden treasures. So in other words, the more you go deeper, the surface things such as material things are already taken care of because he said in Matthew chapter number six, verse number 33, he says, seek ye first. And he says, everything else will be added. So in other words, material things are surface. Those are things that they belong to you. You ain't got to pray too hard about those things. He said those surface things. He says, but revealing and unlocking prophetic codes 
are the death of God. So in other words, the deeper you go in God, the more you see things that you don't have to pray for, they already come to pass. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know some of y'all said, did he just say that? I did. And I got scripture to bag me up. I want to teach you today. So he says, the deeper you go in me, the more you see things that you don't even have to pray for, they already come to pass. Why? If someone can please type in Matthew chapter number six, verse number eight. It supports my claim, y'all. Oh, we going somewhere tonight. I ain't listen. We I'm not gonna give you no baby food. We're gonna we gonna eat some meat tonight, y'all. We're gonna eat a little meat tonight. Look at what it says. He says in Matthew chapter number six, verse number eight. Let me get my Bible, y'all. Let me get I want I want to get the I want to get the Bible. I want to get the Bible. Matthew chapter number six, verse number eight. Look at what it says. Matthew chapter number six, verse number eight. It says, be not you therefore like unto them, for your father, which is God, which is Jesus, manifesting God manifest in the flesh. He says, God knows the things that you have need of. Look at the latter part. He says, what things that you have need of before you ask him. You mean to tell me? God already know what I have need of before I already ask him for it. In other words, God says the things belong to you. He said the earth is the Lord and the food is thereof. It belongs to you. So I ain't got to pray too hard and long about some things that's already mine. It's already mine. So, 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 first Thessalonians chapter number five, verse number 17, it picked it up. It said, God commands us to pray continually, right? That means to pray a lot. Prayer is God's way for us to receive what we need from him. And that's according to Hebrews chapter number four, verse number 16. He tells us the reason we don't have what we need is because we haven't asked or because we are asking selfishly. And that's according to James chapter number four, verses two through four. We also need to pray. Get ready to show you why we also need to pray because we have an enemy. We have an arch enemy, the devil, Beelzebub, Lucifer, who wants to rob us of the good things that God wants to give us. Prayer is God's way to stand firm against the devil's trick. And that's found in Ephesians chapter number six, verse number 18. When we pray, look at this now. When we pray with thanksgiving, God chases away out worry and fills our hearts and minds with his peace and that's found in Philippians chapter number 4 verses 6 through 7 isn't it a wonderful thing to know that God wants to talk with God wants us to talk to him and tell us our needs we all need to spend time with God and so as I'm writing this together this is what God speaks to me he says what's about to be released in the next few days because you place a demand on me he says what you place a demand on me seven of y'all you about to get excited he says you're about to outlive what you've been praying for <laughs> he says you're about to outlive what you've been praying for so in other words what's about to be released to you not only is it going to be released to you he says your children your grandchildren will benefit from it so you mean to tell me that my prayer time with God is not only going to benefit me, but it's going to benefit my children's children. So in other words, God said, Terrence, I'm tired of the people just praying and coming to me for things. He says, he says, when you get a revelation and when you begin to go deeper in the things of God, he says, those things are just GP. Those things he just give it to you just on general, on principle. Material things happens automatically because we are joint heirs to Jesus Christ. Serving Jesus has benefits. Seven people, please type that in the comment section. Serving Jesus has benefits. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, just type that in. I got to continue, y'all. So in other words, when you go deeper in God, he said, Terrence, I'm about to establish 
that thing in the earth. But as long as you don't take your walk serious, you'll never see the God of results. God speaks to me, said, Terrence, if my people will learn to go deeper in the month of July, he says, I'm causing generational blessings to be released in this month of July. It's something special about this month of July. I literally see God doing something supernaturally in this month of July. The unravelings of the Lord are taking place in the month of July. He said, Terrence, tell seven people that will listen to me right now. He said, tell them in this month of July. He said, I'm about to start setting my people up to prosper. I need about seven people just to type in God set me up. Come on, seven people just type in God set me up. Come on, come on, as you're typing, I gotta continue you all. So this is what God says, going deeper in God shifts the algorithm in the spirit which unlock natural blessings. Let me say that again. I need y'all to hear this. Going deeper in God shifts the algorithm in the spirit realm which causes which causes an unlocking for natural blessings for manifested blessings for tangibility blessings so 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 you mean to tell me that as i go deeper the algorithm in the spirit begins to shift you can't experience the massiveness of god operating in the surface realm I need about seven people just to type in. <laughs> I need about seven people just to type in God. Shift the algorithm in the spirit realm. Come on. Seven people just type in God. Shift the algorithm in the spirit realm. If you don't know how to algorithm is spelled A-L-G-O-R-I-T-H-M. God shift the algorithm in the spirit realm. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So look what God says. So what is the algorithm? According to Webster, algorithm means a process or set of rules to be followed in calculations or other problem solving operations, especially by a computer. So in other words, look what God says. He says, the level of your release is determined by the depth of your seeking. Mm. Oh my God. Let me say that again. The level of your release, miracles, signs, and wonders is determined by the depth of your seeking. So the more you seek God genuinely, the more you see the tangibilities of God. In other words, God said, Terrence, tell my people, don't just seek me for stuff because stuff belongs to you already. You ain't got to pray for a house, a car that belongs to you. He said wealth and riches are in your house. See, the reason why you got to keep praying those things because you don't know who you are in the spirit realm. You don't know your birthright. So that's the reason why you spend five or six hours praying for stuff. When you learn how to get into the presence of God, you unlock prophetic codes that causes the stuff to hit your address. So, 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 God said something to me, y'all. He said something to me. He says, I want, I, I, I want you to release this. He said, I want to be able to showcase my people in front of the very ones that want to see you fail. But God says, I can't fully release it all because you won't do right by me. And that's why many of y'all, you're getting what I call crumb blessings, which are just enough so that you can make it. Those are what you call crumb blessings. But, but when you become a for real, for real seeker of God, he says, I'll set you up daily with miracles. He said, no longer when you begin to become an algorithm in the spirit realm, he says, I will cause loaves of miracles to hit your life. You won't have to pray for a miracle. It happens automatically because of your organic relationship with my father. I literally, literally heard God say, he said, I'm about to open up a door that's been shut less than, the ne less than 16 days. Four people. I heard God say, tell four people. He says, I'm about to open a door that's been shut in the next 16 days. You may have received a no, you may have received a no, but I heard God say, 
if you tap into the spirit realm, if you learn how to get your algorithm in the spirit realm upgraded, he says in the next 16 days where they once denied you, they're going to go back and apologize and release that which belongs to you. So, 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 God says, and this is why the devil and your flesh have a heart, want you to have a hard time praying, seeking God's face, reading your word, because the enemy knows if you ever get a revelation on going deeper in God and getting serious with your walk with God, you're going to find out, you're going to find that years of unanswered prayers can be released watch this now in a matter of a week Ooh, can i say that again if you ever get your algorithm in the spirit realm to in the next realm he said the things that you've been praying for he said you're going to start seeing the unravels of the lord in the next week and this is why it is vitally important that we get this prayer thing down packed because God is going to release his favor right in the same place they told you no. <laughs> Can I say that again? The same place where they denied you, the same place where they tried to embarrass you, the same place where they, where they talked about you like 10 dogs, is going to be the same place where God is about to bless you right in front of those very ones. Said the Spirit of the living God. He says, I'm setting up four people even tonight i need the four people i need y'all to hear this he said i'm setting up four people tonight in this season to make more money than you ever made not only in your life but even in your immediate family see you got some people in your family they smarter than you they got a better job than you but because the favor of god is resting upon your life and because you have repented because for, for operating in a place called mundane god said i'm getting ready to now fast forward your life in front of the very ones that have counted you out that have dogged you out that have talked about you like 10 dogs he says i'm getting ready to fast forward your life i'm getting ready to set you up says god he says you're about to make more money than anybody in your life and your family combined he says he says tell them pastor sabrina it won't be based on your degrees your current living place but it's gonna be based on the favor of god and your ability to stay in the presence of god it's in the presence of god is where the unlocking takes place it's in the presence of god is where the miracles take place it's in going deeper in god is where it happens it ain't because of your wittiness it ain't because of who you know it ain't because you know how to will and deal it has everything to do with who god is and god said i won't share my glory with nobody i don't care who you know i don't care who they connected to you better know who God is And if you know who God is He says you are the head And not the tail You are the lenders and never the borrowers I need about seven people just typing I know who God is Come on, come on I know who God is And this is why getting in the presence of God Is vitally important Because it's in the presence of God That's going to cause to, it's going to cause your shift to take place It's going to shift your whole anatomy So God speaks to me About a moment Can I talk about a moment for a moment Somebody type, Somebody just type and talk about a moment for a moment Pastor T I want to talk about a moment for a moment So God speaks to me about a moment While I was reading about Daniel He said Terrence Daniel prayed for 21 for three weeks 21 days morning noon and night for that one moment i need y'all to hear this pull your seat up get closer to the edge we're talking about a moment for a moment then you prayed paula for 21 days morning noon and night just for one moment Prayer. Let me talk about what prayer is. We talked, pa Pastor Arnold talked a little bit about today, but I want to go a little bit further. Prayer is about disciplining yourself to commune with God, but you live for a moment. Did y'all hear what I just said? Prayer is about disciplining yourself to commune with God, but you live 
for that moment. So in other words, the moment is a result of what you've been praying for. Oh, 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 oh. God, this is too much for y'all. I'm done. This is too much for y'all. Y'all not ready for this. You, you're not ready for this. So you mean to tell me I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been giving all for one moment? The Bible says first natural, then spiritual, right? Can I can I give it to you on a natural? You may I'm gonna do like Jesus. I'm gonna speak in parables. Maybe you can understand it in this parable way. Look at this now. Many of us that got married, and um, we spend a year, two years planning for this wedding. We 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 plan. Who's gonna stand with us in our in our in our in our wedding? We find out. We try to find the caterers. We try to find uh, who's gonna be our event coordinator, and uh, we do all of this for a whole year. And and then, in the middle of us planning, we find out if we're gonna go to Jamaica, if we're gonna go to Paris. All of this is planning. Now you've been planning for an entire year for this one day. So while you're planning a year, possibly two years, in a matter of 37 seconds, two years of planning, just to say I do, you may kiss the bride in less than 37 minutes. So in other words, I've been praying I've been fasting, I've been given all for one moment. And see, the enemy understands the power in a moment. That's why he don't want you to pray. That's why he don't want you to give. Because God says, what I'm getting ready to do is getting ready to happen in a moment's notice. So in other words, the moment is a result of what you've been praying for. And this is what God is saying. It's while you're waiting. It's while you're waiting is, is what can make that moment worth it. Oh, let me say that again. It's while you're waiting is what make that moment worth it. And this is what God is saying. Many of you all, you're rushing your time in the presence of God. And all it takes is for that one moment that will make what you're waiting for, for things for years to happen, it happens in a moment's notice. I need about seven people just to type in, don't rush the moment. Come on, seven people, hurry up y'all, just type that in. Just type in, don't rush the moment. Come on y'all, come on y'all. I promise you, you don't wanna log on because I'm getting ready to go somewhere in a few minutes. Just type in, don't rush the moment. So in other words, the speed of a moment can make up time that you waited for. What did Psalms chapter number 40 says? He says in Psalms chapter number 40, it says this, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. What does the word incline mean? I-N-C-L-I-N-E, the word incline. The word incline means having a tendency to do something. So in other words, God is saying, because you waited, because you're waiting, and you're waiting without rushing me, putting me on a timetable, you want to make me bless you. In other words, God says, while you're waiting, I'm watching your posture. While you're waiting, I'm watching how you serve. He says, because you're waiting patiently, you have inclined unto me. And he says, I'm going to hear your cry. Because you're waiting without rushing, you're going to make me heal you. Because you're waiting without rushing, you're going to make me release your money early. <laughs> because you're waiting without rushing me, you're going to make me send you your dream spouse. Oh, God. Because you're waiting without rushing you're going to make me cancel every debt that's been hindering your cash from flowing. I heard God saying, if you can see it coming, coming to pass, you're going to see it happening. Woo! I heard God say, if you can see it coming to pass, you're going to see it happening. 
If you can see it coming to pass, you're going to see it happening. And this is why the enemy, come on, y'all, let me bless you with this. This is why the enemy doesn't want you to tap into the glory of God because the enemy understands when you're in the glory of God, he can't fight you. He understands this one thing. When you're in the glory of God, he's on the outside looking in. So that's why the enemy is fighting many of us tooth and nail in our prayer life because he understands if you ever tap into the glory of God, everything that you believe in God for is going to happen. Look at what Luke chapter number 10 verse number 19 says. Somebody just be my personal moderator and just type in Luke chapter number 10 verse number 19. Look at what it says. He says, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm or even hurt you. When you type, when you have that type of moment with God, whatever you believe in God for can happen quicker than you think. Sometimes what you believe in God for is predicated. What you believe in God for is predicated in the time that you created for God. Many of us, we don't want to wait patiently. We want overnight success. And if we don't see things happening quickly, we move on to plan B. Let me say this and let me bless, bless you tremendously with this. You really don't break free until you carry a struggle long enough. Oh, God. Can I say that again? You really don't break free until you carry a struggle long enough. Until you can get in the presence of God deep enough to forget the struggle. Let me say that again. I don't know if y'all heard it. You really don't break free until you carry a struggle long enough until you can get in the presence of God deep enough to forget the struggles. So in other words, I want to be so caught up in God that regardless of what I'm going through, it don't hinder my prayer life. And because I'm so caught up in God that whatever that's on the outside can't affect my relation with my relationship with God on the inside. And because I'm on the inside with God, whatever's on the outside is being fixed simultaneously while I'm working on the inside with God. So in other words, I want to be so deep in God's presence that whatever stronghold that's attached to me is riding the way with me and eventually it has to let me go. <laughs> oh God, can I please say that again? Y'all missed it. I was talking too fast. So in other words, I want to be so deep in God's presence that whatever stronghold, whatever struggle that I'm in, whatever circumstances that is caused and that's wreaking havoc in my life that's attached to me, it's going to ride the wave with me and because it's riding the way with me and because I'm in the presence of God eventually whatever that's hindering me has to eventually let me go and when it let us go your stuff is being released all at the same time I need about seven people just type in release it God Come on, come on, just type in release it, God. Come on, come on, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Just type in release it, God. Don't log off. Whatever you do, don't log off. Come on, come on, come on. Just type in release it, God. Just type in release it, God. Oh, my God. boring y'all I must be boring about eight of y'all y'all tired of this message I haven't even scratched the surface yet am I boring y'all if I could get 15 more minutes I need about seven people just type in you got 15 minutes Pastor T come on I need come on come on give me 15 minutes 70 y'all just type in you got 15 more minutes Pastor T
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, y'all, come on, come on. I'm telling y'all, we get ready to go somewhere tonight, y'all. We get ready to go somewhere tonight. All right, do me one of his favor. We at halftime. I know you may have did it once, but I need you to do it again. I need every one of y'all to please do me one of his favor. Share this right now. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you 37 seconds. I'm gonna give you 37 seconds. Share this again, y'all. Share this again. I need you to share this again. Share this again. And after you share it, just simply type in. I shared it. Come on, just type it. Just, just share it, y'all. We won't be long. I won't be long. I won't be long. Share it again, y'all. Come on, share it again. Come on, come on. I need y'all to share it again. personal moderator come on y'all we'll be here all night i'm getting ready to let it all hang out these next 15 minutes type in second kings chapter number four second kings chapter number four y'all come on second kings chapter number four come on second kings chapter number four so so god is speaking to me at second kings chapter number four as i'm putting this together god said terrence many of my people are just like this widow woman many of them are looking at where they are and not seeing a miracle, even in what they call dead or a dead in situation. Come on in. I need y'all 15 minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm going all the way in. All that ain't done in the next 15 minutes, I'll finish this on Sunday. He says, many of my people are looking at where they are and not seeing a miracle, even in what they call a dead in 
or a, a what we call a death situation. He said, Terrence, tell about five of them right now that will listen to me. He said, tell them life is about to start even at the, what you call the worst situation in your life. Mm, let me say that again. He said, tell five people that life is about to start even after what you call the worst season of your life. And this is what you have to understand and how the enemy works. It's his job, his mission, and that's to cause you to slip into depression, which will cause many of you all to slip into poverty. And when you're slipping into poverty, then you can't think which now causes you now to operate in a place called bondage. God said, Terrence, tell those same five people that they're about to experience 3 John 2, even before the end of this year. What does 3 John 2 say? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in good health, even as I so prosper. I need about seven people. Just type in, this is my season to prosper. Come on, seven people. Just type in, this is my season to prosper. I got 13 more minutes. So here you have the widow woman, right? You have the widow woman who has lost her husband, who was her provider. And because he was the provider, she is now left with nothing to offer. See, 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 poor people need debts they couldn't pay their debts so because they were poor they had debtors and so they had to sell their children as slaves i'm in second kings chapter number four y'all i'm getting ready to walk this dog y'all look at this now so 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 jesus said it jesus picked it up right here he said i became poor so that you may become rich so in other words i heard god saying in this season He's about to pay off debts that's been hindering you from prospering. Let me say that again. He said, I'm about to pay off debt that's been hindering this type of people from prosper, prospering. So in 2 Kings chapter number 4, look at this widow woman. So here you have the creditors who are operating in a place called greed. Who are operating in a place called ruthlessness. But God says, I'm about to shut down every person who is operating in a place called ruthlessness and I'm about to cause you to prosper even when it don't look like you about to prosper. I need about seven people just to type in flip the script God. Come on, God's about to flip the script y'all. Seven people just type in flip the script God. Come on y'all, don't log off. I'm about to release a prophetic word. Don't log off. Look what he says. So here in this passage of scripture in 2 Kings chapter number four, we're about to see four things of the Lord that's about to take place. Four things that's about to take place. Prophetically speaking, the number four represents the world's impact. Four prophetically speaking represents something with worldwide, worldwide impact. I heard God say as I was putting this together, he says, look at the number four. He said, this is why the enemy has been attacking many of y'all in the last six to eight months strongly. He's been attacking you trying to frustrate you because he knows what God is birthing in you is even bigger than you. What God has placed down on the inside of you is global. It ain't local. What God is placing down on the inside of you, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't for your block. God said you're a local, you're, you're a global individual. And so what God has placed down on the inside of you is going to cause a global impact. And the enemy doesn't want you to come forth. But I heard God said, tell them tonight, the enemy that messed around and allowed you to hear this word. And tonight, anything that's dead, I prophesy, is about to come forth and alive. So four things happen in this passage of scripture. Number one, I need someone to please be my personal moderator. I got about seven, I got 11 more minutes. Look at the four things that's happening in this passage of scripture. Number one, God is about to provide money to a poverty stricken widow. That's number one. Number two, look at what God is doing in this situation. He's raising up a dead boy to life. That's number two. Number, number three, he's purifying poisonous food. Number three. Number four, he's providing food 
for 100 million. Now keep in mind, they're in a poverty stricken situation. And this is the chapter. And in this chapter, let me walk this dog y'all. And in this chapter, what's causing and unlocking is another level of faith. And this is what I heard God saying. The faith that you had three years ago will not work in this new era. And the reason why it won't work because your assignment in the earth has increased. And because your assignment has increased in the earth, you're going to need a bigger faith, but it's going to be the same God. Greater faith, greater miracles. Greater faith, greater unlockings. Greater faith, greater miracles. Greater faith, greater unlockings. So look at Second Kings chapter number four. I, I don't have all time, all day. Just when you get when you get a chance, read verses number four through verse number seven. Let me just exegete the text. Here you have this widow woman who's in a critical situation. Her husband is dead, and he left her with a lot of debt. Paul's right there. This is why it is vitally important that many of us. We walk in our wealthy place now. So when we leave this place called Earth, we won't leave our children with a bunch of debt trying to find ways to bury us. So here you have this widow woman. She's in a critical state. And it's one thing to have a situation, but it's another thing when you're speaking to yourself and convincing yourself that you're not coming out of this situation. This woman. She's speaking to herself saying, you know what? I'm not coming out this situation. So four things are going to happen in this situation. Look at the four things that's going to happen in this situation. Her husband is dead and he left her without anything to work with. She's dead. Her husband leaves her nothing but bills. That's number one. Number two, she has no hope, doesn't believe her situation is going to get better. So now she's mentally depleted. That's number two. Number three, the creditors are coming to take the only thing she has left to live for, which are her sons. That's number three. Number four, when the creditors are coming, they're not, they're not going to turn, they're now going to turn her sons into slavery. That's number four. And this is what you and I have to understand, and that is whenever you're facing a spiritual attack which is manifesting itself in the natural you have to learn even in the midst of that god is preparing a way of escape so you mean to tell me even in the midst of my pandemic in the midst of my crisis that god is literally provi providing a way of escape providing a door for me to walk out of so the enemy says, the first thing that I do, I go after this woman's faith. <laughs> he says, I'll go after her faith. And because her faith was on a flat, now that has caused her not to believe that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that she can ask or even think. Because her faith is on a flat. Simply because she can't see the forest for looking at the trees. And usually, when the enemy hits most of us, he hits us with multiplicities of attack. So now the attacks are coming rapidly with intense fire. And, and, and you know the crazy thing about all of this? Her husband was a prophet. You go figure. Her husband was a prophet and, and he didn't know any better. So, so you would think that he would know better. But uh, we're we going to deal with that. Hopefully in the next seven minutes, I have I have nine more minutes left. Hopefully I can get to that. So, 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 so you mean to tell me that as a prophet of God, God didn't tell you or give you insight on what's to come? As a matter of fact, we're not going to even get to that spiritual side right now. Naturally speaking, as the head of his home, he should have always had something saved up for his family. Allow me to say this Most of the things that many of us Are facing that aren't fair Many of us Are going through some, going through some things It's not even fair The average person is losing their mind You feel like You've lost your mind But you haven't
the real truth of the matter is you are a faith away from re getting back in the game so sometimes we just have to look much harder to see the promises of God and stand on it regardless of what's going on. So now God sends this woman a prophet to unlock her drought. I need about seven people just type in God, send me a prophet. Come on, come on, come on. God, send me your prophet. Come on, just type in God, send me your prophet. So look at this now. Look at this. I want to bless you. I need. I want to bless you this. I want to bless you with this, Paul. I want to bless you with this, Crystal. I want to bless you with this, Kelly. I want to bless you with this, Larise. Look what he says. I want to bless you with this, Pastor Brenda. I want to bless you with this, Tasha. Come on. I want y'all to. I want y'all to be blessed, Sister Deloach. I want you to be blessed. Look at this. So now God sends this woman a prophet, Jeff, to unlock her drought, and this is why I tell all of you all that will listen. Never discount the ability that God gives his prophets. In other words, you can be facing an issue one day. God sends his prophet to unlock your situation for the next day. In other words, you can be in a drought one day. God sends you a prophet the next day to unlock your drought. I'm convinced of this one thing. That prophets of God has the ability to unlock and unclog drought simply because they speak on behalf of God. So here you have Elijah. Come on, y'all. For those of y'all that don't believe that prophets are real, I'm getting ready to show you how prophets is getting ready to unlock this drought. So here you have Elijah asking the woman, What do you have in your house? <laughs> he asked this woman, What do you have in this in your house? Look at verse number two, y'all. Look at verse number two. Look at verse number two, y'all. He's talking to this widow woman. She's left with debt. The creditors are coming. They come to steal her son. They're going to turn into slavery. So the prophet comes. He says in verse number two, and Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what has thou in thy house? And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house but a pot of oil. Come on, y'all. Let me take my time, y'all. I ain't got nobody pot of oil in my house. What you mean? So can you imagine what's going on in this woman's mind? I told you that the creditors are coming to get most the most valuable thing that's in this woman's life, which is her son. Other than that, she has nothing. So you mean to tell me you get ready to take my son? You can have you can have anything. But you come to get the only thing that's valuable to me? Wow. She tells the prophet, I don't have nothing that's of any value. Come on, get ready to bless y'all. Come on. If, if, can y'all give me six more minutes? I'm at six minutes, y'all. Tell me to keep going. Uh, just tell me to keep going. Because I don't want to preach this Sunday, y'all. Just tell me to keep going. Tell me to keep going. Come on, y'all. If I can get six people, tell me to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I ain't got six people, y'all. I'm gonna give you 45 more seconds. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. That's five. Six. All right, here we go. So, so he tells her, he says, she tells him, she tells the prophet, I don't have nothing that's valuable. Usually when God, I want to show y'all something about prophetic 101 when God sends prophets in your life. Usually when God allows his prophets to release things to you, usually your flesh, your circumstances, the way you feel, usually does not align to what they're asking for. <laughs> Can, let me turn this, I need to turn this down. I, let me turn this down. Y'all need to hear this. Let me turn this all the way down. Usually, when God sends authentic, organic prophets to release things to you, usually your flesh, your circumstances, where you currently are, the way you feel, usually does, usually does not align to what they're asking for. When God's prophets are asking you to do certain things 
or for you to press is usually because they can see beyond how you feeling, beyond where you are, beyond what you see. In other words, your obedience, your submission, and your commitment is what's getting ready to cause your unlocking. Hmm, let me say that again. Your submission, your commitment, your faithfulness, and your obedience is what's getting ready to cause and unlocking. Usually, when God's prophets ask you to do certain things, usually, you don't have it. Okay. Usually, when God's prophets tell you to do certain things, I'm talking about God's prophets. I ain't talking about manipulators. Usually, when God's prophets tell you to do something, it don't look like you can afford it. But it's in that time when it don't look like it should have happened is when you about to receive the greatest unlocking in your life. Woo! A real prophet does not operate under manipulation. Their track record speak for itself. How many of us know, how many of us know that our feelings will get us in a world of trouble? Oh yes it will, it's, it'll get us in a world of trouble. So here you have, come on y'all, come on, y'all want to grab this word y'all. God has given me the ability to unlock your drop tonight. You want your drop to be unlocked. H hear the rest of this message. So here you have the prophet who is challenging her and she doesn't even know what's about to be released because of her obedience. She has some oil, a few vessels. It seemed like nothing considering considering her problems. But when but when multiplication is about to hit, it becomes more than enough. Here's where your miracles are about to be unlocked. Tammy, here's where your miracles are about to be unlocked is through your obedience. I need about seven people just to type in, I will obey even if it hurts. Come on, seven people just type in, I will obey even if it hurts. So look at this. So, 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 so here's where the miracles about to be a lot. Miracles require acts of obedience that sometimes challenge us, Tasha, to the very core. Mm. The Bible records in this passage of scripture, she took the plunge and obeyed the word of God and the prophet. And multiplication showed up on every front. I'm getting ready to show you how it showed up on every front. As she poured, the oil was doubled and doubled again. Come on, y'all, don't log off. Especially those of y'all that's connected to the Faith World Family Worship System, don't log off. I feel your unlocking tonight. Stay right here. As she poured, the oil was doubled and then doubled again. She was walking in double, double. The oil kept flowing and flowing because of the power of the word that was flowing. This was not just natural. It was prophetic anointing that was flowing and impacting everything in this woman's life. Her entire debt was canceled and her son remained free. The double double disrupt and shatter the plans of the enemy. So look at what God says. The doublings of the Lord wasn't just for her. It was for her entire family. Whew. And this is what I heard God saying. Not only am I going to bless you, but I'm blessing everything that's attached to you. I heard God say every pain, every scar, every letdown, every betrayal you've gone through. Not only are you about to cash in, but everyone that's attached to you are about to cash in. I need about seven people just to type in cash me in God. Come on, seven people just type in cash me in God. 
Come on, come on, just type that in. Come on, just type in, cash me in. I heard God saying, this next blessing that God's about to bestow upon you is about to be generational. I heard God saying, all of heaven wants to bless you so strong that your unborn bloodline is going to feel it. See, many of us, we think that we've gone through what was the worst season of our life. But what we don't understand, and that is others are going to benefit from our warfare. Oh, God. He said others are going to benefit from our warfare. So, in other words, you took the hit so that your seeds couldn't. You took the hit so that your grandchildren won't take the hit. So that your children won't take the hit. Because God knew if your seeds would have taken what you went through, they probably wouldn't have survived it. I need about seven people just to type in, I survived it. I'm done. 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 I come. I come back next week. I'll, I'll come back next week. I come back next week. But when you get a chance, I want you to read Second Kings chapter number four. The Bible says, because she obeyed the prophet, what she thought was minuscule, what she thought that was nothing, the Bible said. The prophet said, what was in your house? She said, I have nothing. I'm going to fast forward. What you call nothing is valuable to God. What you call minuscule, what you call absolutely obsolete, God said, that's where your miracle resides. I need y'all to obey what I'm, I need y'all to listen to what I'm telling y'all. I need y'all to hear this. If you never heard anything I've ever shared, ever shared, this is what God pressed upon me this morning. He said, Terrence, seven people out of their obedience, they're about to experience an unlocking. The unravelings of the Lord is about to take place because of tonight. I need every one of y'all right now. Don't hesitate. Again, look at what the, the widow woman did. She sold. She obeyed and because she obeyed, she did not go without. I'll finish this on next week. I talk about the jars. I talk about the vessels. She did not go without because she obeyed. I need every one of y'all right now to sow. Every one of y'all right now to sow. Zale, another chance ministries, 12 at gmail.com. Cash app, dollar sign, TDH ministries, 721. Do not be afraid to sow. If God tell you to sow a hundred, sow it. Whatever the amount God tell you to sow, I need you to sow right now. Sow what you, it may be easy to sow five dollars. Sow as a, God said, I'm going to bless your sacrifice tonight. That's why I just heard God say, he said, Terrence, tell them I'm getting ready to bless their sacrifice tonight. A sacrificial seed. It's a sacrifice for you to sow a hundred. It's a sacrifice for you to sow 500. Sow it right now. Believe the Lord God, his prophets tonight. Y'all just heard the word. Don't allow your flesh, don't allow where you are to cause you not to you receive this miracle. A miracle is taking place because of this seed. I'm telling y'all what I heard God say. He says, tell them, when you sow, the harvest is coming. When you sow, the plenty is coming. When you sow, multiplicity is coming tonight. I dare you to sow right now. But you got to be a cheerful giver when you sow them. You got to be a cheerful giving, giver as you sow. I dare you to sow right now. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. Come on. As you're rushing in, we declare. I dare you right now to sow. The leaders of faith, world, friend, worship said, I dare you to sow. We pray for your kingdom to come. Pray for your will to be done. My God. My God, I'll finish this on next week. There's so much. I'll finish this next Thursday. God, let your people come out of fear right now. Fear, loose them right now. Fear, loose you right now. Have your way, Jesus. She didn't have nothing that she thought was valuable, but because she obeyed God's prophet. 
Rosandre de Yamada Ramas. Yeah, 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 yeah. I dare you to sow. If you're afraid to sow, don't sow. If you, if you think it's a hocus pocus, a scheme, don't sow. But I'm telling you what I heard God say, sow tonight. Yes, God. So right now. What a word, what a word. I felt God on this word tonight. If you enjoyed this word, just type it. I enjoyed this word, Pastor T. If you enjoyed this word, just type it. I enjoyed this word, Pastor T. Yes, God. Yes, God. And if you need to sow tomorrow, say, Pastor, I sow tomorrow. I don't have it right now, but I sow tomorrow. You want to seal this word with a seed. You want to seal this word with a seed. If you need to sow tomorrow, sow tomorrow. But hold yourself accountable and do just that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Yes, God. Let your people get it. Let your people get it. Thank you all so much. What a word. What a word. For those of you all that came in on the tail end, and even those of you all that did not hear the totality of this, this message, please, I beg of thee, go back and watch this word. Go back and watch it. Go back and watch it. This word was all God. God was on this word. I'm telling you all, God was on this word. I believe for seven people that your seed is getting ready to cause your harvest to come forth. I believe it. I put my life on the chopping block for seven people. When you sow, watch the harvest. But be a cheerful giver. The woman obeyed God. The widow woman obeyed. That was the key. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And watch what God does because of your obedience. Amen. This is Pastor T. I pray this word bless you. I'll see y'all Sunday. Whatever you do, don't miss it. Get there early. God's going to do something supernatural. God's going to do the never been done before. I strongly suggest getting there early. We've experienced, we're experiencing a massive overflow at Faith World Family Worship Center. No goodness of our own, but because of this fast, this fast, it's because of this fast, that's why God has unlocked some things. The Bible says only some things come by fasting and praying. Amen. And, we, and we're seeing the hearts of that thing. Amen. All right. Set up the thumbs and the hearts. Yes, God. Come on, sit them up. Sit them up. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man.
Ich bin los. 